everybody. Welcome. How are you guys doing? Good. Awesome. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and um, mute everybody just so we can get started. All right. And we're going to use the chat also. So if you pop that up um, in your browser there. There we go. Okay. So we're going to talk about email marketing today. So I hope you guys are ready for that. <laughs> All right, so um, go ahead and say, or in the chat, or you can unmute yourself if you want, why you want to talk about email marketing today, why you're here, and hopefully we can address uh, some of those things as we go through. And I also wanted to ask everybody um, how they like the membership so far. I know some of you have been in for a little while. Some of you have just joined. Nancy says she has so many ideas. She doesn't know where to start. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. That, that does happen. So we're going to sort through some of that today. I'm just pulling up my last few things. All right. The um, membership. And I'm going to share this with you guys. All right, let's see. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah, I've been really having a lot of fun with it. Um, just getting to know everybody and um, you know, sharing things. And I'm glad this is our, a great webinar that we're going to do today, like to really kind of get into some of this stuff. Um, and let's see, Rakita says, I need to know what not to do next year. Yes. <laughs> yes. Those five things. Yes. We're going to go over that for sure. All right. So I am going to share um, a couple things here with you guys, but before I do that, actually, let me bring this down. Got quite a few little windows here going on. Just want to make sure I've got everything good for you guys. Um, if you are, let's see. Okay, you're good, Beth. Um, so if you're um, in the membership, if you want to open up that up as a tab, I'm going to actually go into there and use some of the tools in there. So um, under the menu, there's a thing called View the Pro Toolkit. Um, and if you click on that, it's going to bring up the toolkit that's only exclusive to members. You can only get this if you're a member. Um, and the toolkit has a bunch of links in it. Might take a second for it to kind of pop up, so give it a second. But there's one under the M's. It's called Mailer Light. That is what I recommend for um, all email, you know, marketing systems. If you're already on that, great. If you're not, they have a free trial. They are pretty much free for most of you guys. I don't think, um, you know, any of you will be actually using like more than a thousand people to start. But if you have more than a thousand people to start, they actually will uh, give you free membership and then beyond a thousand, then that's when you start with, you know, their payments and it's really, really inexpensive. And they have a lot of, um, you know, great tools that are like built in that you don't have to pay extra for. So that's why I like them a lot. We're going to go into that. I'm going to show you my account and how it works um, and show you some of the things that you can utilize um, that today as well. So we're going to go into that, but if you don't have an account, don't worry, but it is a link in there um, directly to the site and it is an affiliate link. All these are affiliate links for me. So every time somebody signs up, I get like $2, literally. <laughs> so uh, so anyway, um, if you want to use MailerLite, that's a link I have in there. And you just have to go to the membership. And I will do this really quick. Let me actually share my screen so you guys can see it. There we go. 
So you can see under here, it says view the Pearl toolkit. And when you click it, it opens up the um, tools and resources. And if you scroll down a little, there is Mailer Light right there. So um, that is one of the things that we'll be using today. So if you want to, um, to look at that or join into that, it'll take you to this page. And I'm just going to log in here. Um, no, this is a client. I want me to log out of this one. All right, we'll use mine. I have a lot of clients on this. It's a really good platform. All right, so this is actually an email I just sent. Um, I got 12% open on that one. My list is a little dirty right now. We're gonna talk about that, <laughs> but clean lists. Um, and so that's why my, my open rate's pretty low on this one. But you know, it's not too bad, 300 people and 26 clicked. So we're gonna go into that as well. Um, so the five things as we talk about um, the five things you should not be doing in 2021. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel my screen share real quick so we can get back to that in a little bit. Um, the five things you should not be doing in 2021. So there are so many things you can do with email. And one of the things that you should not be doing, and I know it's gonna sound a little silly, is not sending email. <laughs> you really should be utilizing email. And a lot of people don't. And it's actually, a, there was a study um, and it was one in five people check their email first thing each day. So think about the audience you have and then one fifth of them are checking their email first thing every single day. And so that's a lot of eyeballs. That's a lot of people. And if you're not sending email, that is, you know, you're just ignoring it. So don't ignore it. So do not not send email. <laughs> and I want you to really get that because this is something that um, is super important. And if you're using it in conjunction with having a great brand and having a good website where when you send them an email, where are they going to go, right? We need to have that solid website, have good social media that's out there running for us so that we can start to use social media as a touch and our, you know, normal networking efforts as a touch. And now our emailing is a touch. So that's going to speed up our sales cycle and really get us to the um, sale a lot quicker. So um, you want to make sure that you are using it. So I just want to kind of put that bug in your ear that if, it, you know, if possible, really kind of make it a priority that you put email into your schedule as something that you're going to do on a regular basis. Sending one email and sitting on it doesn't really help at all. So you want to actually be on a consistent basis, whether it's quarterly, whether it's monthly. Um, I send mine as, as things come up. So you'll see things for me that are, hey, I'm going to be in this summit. Hey, I have something to share with you. Hey, I just found this new tool, whatever it is. Um, and so I will send out things like that. And I also have automatic emails that are already being pushed out as well to keep me more consistent when I'm not as consistent on my own. And we're going to talk about um, RSS feeds and stuff like that as well. And 55% uh, of people, so this is not just the one in five that check their, their email first thing, but 55% of people who were, um, that were surveyed in this uh, thing that I found, it said that they check their email before they start work, which is before 9 a.m. So that's also going to kind of play into how important email is, even with the rest of your audience who's not that one in five. All right. The other piece that we should not be doing when we send emails is only selling. And I feel that sometimes with social media, we've really gotten this into our heads. We almost never sell on social media. <laughs> a lot of people will, you know, they'll post and post and post, and then they'll do like one sales post, like once a year. <laughs> and then they'll wonder why they're not getting any sales. But with email, it almost seems like that's the only thing we do. We only sell on email. And I would say that the thing you should not do is basically ignore selling. You do need to sell, but you don't need to sell all the time. Um, and so uh, with email, it's almost like here's 30% off, here's this, here's this. But we also have to educate through email. But we don't want to make our emails super, super long, right? That's another one of my five is, is don't make your email super long. We don't want to do that. If you've ever been on, like reading a Facebook post, and you start reading it and you see a little bit of it. And then it says, see more. And it's this giant thing, right? That's really annoying because now do I have time to read this? Can I move forward reading this? Do I, you know, am I going to get interrupted? Whatever. Am I going to finish the whole thing before, you know, whatever the next thing is I'm doing that happens. So 
you kind of get bored almost and then you scroll past it. So with email, what I find is that a lot of people make their emails too long or they're too wordy and there's not enough stuff to break up what they're trying to say. I feel like if your email is too long, it should probably be a blog post if it's long, right? And the other thing is, um, one, the other number four is your emails should not be newsletters. Newsletters are out. Everybody's like, wait, newsletters are out? What? <laughs> newsletters are out. <laughs> They're done. <laughs> And I know you'll probably see other, you know, gurus talking about different things, but I really do believe that newsletters are out. And I've actually um, held to this principle for many years in my email marketing, and it's definitely helped me to really shy away from newsletters um, and be really simple to the point. I believe that it's more beneficial, and this is just what I've seen from work clients I've worked with and my my own in you know in marketing and integration with that is that it's actually more beneficial to send a very short, very to the point, one topic email and send a lot of them than it is to send one email at the beginning of the month with 10 items in it. And you hope that they read everything and you hope that it all comes together and that they you know, understand what you're trying to get across to them. Um, and what happens with this is you overwhelm people. Now, if you've ever gotten a newsletter and you look at it, have you thought, well, I'm just going to sit down here for the next 20 minutes and read this? <laughs> no, <laughs> you're probably like, I'm going to read that later. Let me tag that. Let me put that in a little inbox. Let me put a little tag on it. Let me star it. And your inbox is probably full of that. That's probably why you have over a four digit, five digit email number. <laughs> it's because you want, I'm going to go back to that. I'm going to go back to that. But we don't. And so if you've ever gotten an email, that's one thing. It tells you one thing. It gives you, hey, look at this blog post we posted. Do I want to read it now or will I catch it later, like another time? Do Am I interested in this podcast that Elizabeth just sent out or will I just catch the next one? Like it's going to give you that instant yes or no. And so with email, we don't want to clutter people's email inboxes. That's not what we're here for. We don't want to make their lives more stressful. We don't want to make their lives more hectic. We want to say, if you are going to read my email. I want it to be important. I want it to be impactful. And I want it to actually make an impression. So we don't want to just sit there and start spewing all these different things and have them not be important, not be impactful and not make an impression. So um, those are, did I, I think I did, I did all four, right? I know I did, I didn't do five. Um, and I think that would be, you know, um, number five is don't send anything that's not important. And determining what that is is a little tricky, but I'm going to teach you a couple things about that today. All right. And I'm going to show you some examples um, of that as well. All right. So is that good with you guys? You guys kind of get the five now, the things you should not do. And even though they're kind of like the flip, right? Like you should definitely be using email. Don't not don't not not use email. <laughs> so anyway, um, so we're going to go into Mailer Light now, and I'm going to show you a couple of things. Uh, let's see here. I just want to go through my slideshow because I didn't want to go through like slides today. I just want to be more hands on. Um, I'm just going to kind of skip through this just to make sure I'm catching all of my important tips here. Okay, um, I have a couple of questions that we're going to go over before we get to Mailer Light. Um, what you should be saying, when you should be sending, and how do you build your list? Um, so we kind of went over the whole, like, I do the who, what, why, where, when, how kind of idea. We went over why email is important. And we should be sending it to our list, right? So that's who we're sending it to. And our list can be colleagues. It can be a mix of colleagues and clients. It can be a mix of referral partners. It can be all those different people together. Some people like segmented lists. I don't think that that's always necessary. I think that if we have something to say and it's important, then anybody will accept that. And they'll either say, oh, that's not for me and ignore it and just not bother. You know, they're not going to say, oh, I'm not subscribing, you know, like I'm not gone, but they're just going to ignore it and not worry about it. So as long as we're sending out things that are impactful, important um, and make an impression to our people that are, whether they're referral partners or their colleagues or their clients, then we don't have to worry about like worrying about segmenting and all that stuff. 
You can segment if you have something really specific to say to just clients, you can do that. I've done that before, or I've only invited clients to certain things, um, or like members of this group, I only invite members to certain things or tell members certain things. But really, a lot of it is just me sending it to everyone on the list, whether it's colleagues, clients, or you know whoever else wants to be on the list. So don't worry so much about segmenting if you're just getting started with this email stuff. What you should be saying is the next piece. And like I said, if you can judge something that it's important, impactful, and makes an impression, then that's something you should tell people. And for me, I think that my, my um, podcast is important, impactful, and makes an impression. So I sent that out. I send that out every single time it posts, it triggers an email and I don't actually do anything. It's all automated. I'm going to show you how I do that. I do the same thing with blog posts when I post blogs, which is rare these days. I don't post as many as I should. Um, but I, when I post a blog post, it does the same thing. I have an automatic trigger that automatically sends it because the blog posts, I'm sitting down, taking the time to write them. And I think they're going to be important, impactful and make an impression. So I want to make sure that that's going out to my email list. Other things would be, um, you know, events, things that are happening. Um, maybe, like I said, if I find a new tool, you know, for me to give my tools to my clients and, and colleagues and say, hey, here's a tool, here's my link for it. I think it'd be really great if you use this because a lot of people have been asking me about, you know, um, Squarespace or hosting or email marketing, um, CRMs, whatever it is that I have a new tool for, then I'm going to share that with my audience. And because um, I've built a reputation, which you guys have all have businesses already, if you built a reputation on being that resource, when I send something out, that's, it's almost kind of salesy, right? Like, oh, she sent me her link, you know, <laughs> it's an affiliate link, but I'm not being salesy about it because I'm, I would genuinely share it with you anyway. Like I would share it with you no matter what, if, if I had a link or not. So um, that's just me. And that's just the way that I present those things. So think about the stuff that, you're going to share anyway. And I've even done it. Like if there's no affiliate link for something, I'm going to send an email anyway, because I think that that tool or that thing is going to be important enough for a person to pick up and say, Hey, yeah, go to this company, buy this thing because it's going to help you with, you know, whatever it is that I'm, I'm sharing with them. So um, look at those types of things, things that you're telling people about when you have conversations with them, um, questions that you're answering. Sometimes I even take FAQs and I make them into like a blog post and then I send them out or I'll make them into an email by itself and just send that out separately. The only thing I would say is when you're deciding what to send, remember that email is, is siloed. It stays in its little bubble, right? It doesn't leave. And so when you send something in email, if you wrote this really awesome thing and you put it in email, only the people that open that email see it. But if you write this really awesome thing and you put it on your blog and it triggers an email, now you've actually gotten people to go to your website to read it and it's on your website for posterity and you're using it for SEO. <laughs> so don't just think about writing these amazing, awesome emails that really tell the story or share something insightful or important. Make sure that if it's going to be that and you're going to really put a lot of time and effort into writing it and it's not just a simple paragraph and a photo, then it is more than that, then you want to put that as a blog post. You want to utilize it as a blog and then let the email send it for you. Okay. But if you're going to write, you know, I think emails should be like a photo, a paragraph and a button. Now, when I send out some of the summit emails that I've been sending lately, because I've been on a lot of summits uh, and different conference emails, they actually send me a lot of that copy. I tweak it and then I put it in. So I'm not really writing all that stuff. <laughs> and sometimes I think they're too long and I actually take stuff out <laughs> as much as I can. Um, but when I send an email that, that I've actually written, typically, it's even if it's like a one-off email that's not a blog post or you know a podcast or anything, it's just a one-off email. I send it with one to two paragraphs at the most, if I really have something to say, make sure I'm explaining everything well, a photo or a little video or a GIF or something. And a button or two buttons and that's it. So definitely, um, you know, think about that when you're writing emails, if you're going to write it really awesome, make it a blog post, <laughs> you're going to have all this extra ver verbiage, but if you're going to make it super short, super sweet, and like, just here's exactly what you need to know, go to this link to get whatever the other information is, or go to this link to purchase or whatever, or sign up RSVP, 
then just do that. Make it really, really simple. All right. Um, when should you be sending? I'll go over this really quickly as well. And you'll see this in the examples that I show. Um, you should actually be sending when your audience is awake, when your audience is ready to receive. So if you're thinking about your audience, think about them as a person. So we talk about target market um, and branding. And when we find our target market, they kind of become a collective person, right? They're, they're become this one person that, um, you know, is kind of this conglomerate of everybody. And if most of your people have kids or most of your people, um, you know, have pets or maybe most of your people are those 6 a.m. CrossFitters, you know, <laughs> like think about when are they getting up? What's their routine like? And some people um, that I work with and their their target market is parents, then sometimes it's like eight or nine o'clock before they sit down and like actually have a minute to like do anything. And other people, they're looking at their email on their phone at lunch, or maybe it's at like two o'clock, or maybe it's right after the kids go to school. So like there's all these different times. So knowing your audience, knowing their lifestyle, knowing a day in the life, if you will, um, of, for them would really be helpful to give you that time frame when to send. Because you want to send it close enough to the time frame when they're possible probably likely to open it. So for me, I send mine at 5 a.m. Because most of my people, first thing they do before 9 a.m., at least before 9 a.m., whether it's first thing in the morning or, you know, uh, like just before nine, before they get started for work, they will open the emails. And they might not open mine, but they'll see the subject line and they'll browse it. They might not open it right that second. They might ignore it completely altogether, but majority of people are going to open them earlier. So, um, and then how do I build my list was my last one. Um, and for this, I really think a lead magnet is great. I've used tons of lead magnets over the years. Um, I, a five to 10 page ebook, something really, really short and simple. Um, I actually just did one with a client. Um, this is a little bit, let me see if I can pull it up actually, because it was a really really good book. Let's see here. Um, downloads. Okay. So I'm going to pull this up so you guys can see it. And it's over here. I actually did this in Canva. So I'm gonna show you the Canva doc so you can see how it was put together. It's pretty simple. So this is something I would recommend um, if you're trying to build your list. Here we go. You guys see that? Um, so this is, let me move this out of the way. You probably, just probably can't see this, but it's in the way. Okay. Um, so this is her book. And she was saying that, you know, a lot of people come to her for this like incontinence thing and everything. I know it's kind of weird, but anyway. Um, so we wanted to write a book that was basically telling people like, this is a problem. You're not alone, but there's things you can do on your own to kind of try and solve this issue um, that aren't going to be like invasive or embarrassing or anything like that. Cause sometimes people don't want to go, they wouldn't want to go to a doctor for this or they don't, sometimes they don't want to come to you for your service because they're embarrassed or they're afraid or whatever. Right. So we wrote up um, her bio, which we just pulled from her website. She literally had little titles that we wrote about. And then she wrote a, a paragraph. Do you see how simple this is four pages, one, two, three, four. And they're just paragraphs. That's it. That's like a little paragraph. And it was about saying, hey, look, this is something you can do right now. This is a tip. This is a help. This is a, you know, if you are going to try these things, that means you're really wanting to do something with your recovery. And if you're really interested in your recovery, you're going to try these things. And if they work, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, that person helped me so much. I need to like really fix what is happening. And I'm going to go to that person. Or if they don't work, 
why isn't it working? I wonder if this person could tell me why. Does that make sense? So kind of even if it goes wrong or if it goes right, it's like she's still going to be the expert. She's still going to be the one that helped them in some way to move forward, whether it's not not working for them. Why isn't it working for them? How can they move forward? What's their next step? Talk to somebody. Ask somebody their question in person for real, not just download an ebook. And so now this is on her website. And um, let me stop the share there. Um, so it's on her website. And then you just sign up with your email for that. And you get that for free. And then once you download that, it's something that they, like I said, they may not open, they may try, they may not try, they may just read, but it brings her that authority that says, I want to share this with you freely, but it's not free because they're, they're paying with their email, right? <laughs> so, um, all right, let's see. Let me go to email and share this with you guys. Okay, we're going to talk about subject lines. Hold on a second. All right, we got so much going on here. Okay. All right, so everybody can see my mailer light here. All right, awesome. So um, this is my current mailer light. Um, this is, we're going to show, I'm going to show you a couple of things I've sent recently. And when you log in, obviously there's a dashboard um, and it gives you the number of active subscribers, um, you know, how the subscriber growth is going. Not great because I haven't been putting out anything for, <laughs> for my lead magnets. Um, and it also shows me my unsubscribe rates. And this is really interesting because sometimes it's high. Like this October was 136 people. But what I found is that a lot of people had duplicate emails. And so people were like actually cleaning out their inboxes <laughs> and people had emailed me that they're like, oh, I'm not unsubscribing. I promise I'm, you know, I had two emails in there or whatever. And I was like, oh, that, that's fine. I honestly don't look at this number a lot because this number, it's kind of like looking at your likes number on Facebook. It's more of a vanity number that the total number of people um, that you have in your list and also, you know, this unsubscribed. And I used to actually get an email every time somebody had subscribed. Imagine how many emails I would have had if I, <laughs> if I had done that. So I kind of ignore this and it's not because I don't want to know that people are unsubscribing. It's because I know that the people that are remaining are the people that really need what I'm going to be sharing going forward. And I've even had some people try to resubscribe after the fact. So they'll unsubscribe and they'll be like, no, I kind of did need that. And then they'll come back. So I just let people do what they're going to do. That's not on me. Um, you know, not up to me what they want to do. But the opened rate and the clicked rate are on me. So the opened rate really has a lot to do with my subject lines. And for these three months here, so we have September, October, and November's only halfway through. So I've only sent seven emails this month, <laughs> um, but I sent 13 in September and 22 in October. Now, a lot of these are because when I do an event or I'm on a summit or I'm speaking, I send a couple for that event. So like two or three for one event to remind people, say, hey, don't forget it's tomorrow, that kind of stuff. Um, I also sent uh, my, e my podcast goes out every week. And um, in October, I think it was going out twice a week at one point. And then of course, in September, it went out, I had 13 emails. I don't think I had as many um, event emails that month either. And then in, September, in November, I realized I ran out of podcasts. So that's lower. So there's different factors of why these numbers are higher or lower for each month. The most I've ever sent in a month, I believe was 47. And this is only for this year, for the last year. But I sent 47 emails in a month and it was because there was events, there was podcasts going out, there was blogs going out. Um, so there was lots of things happening and people unsubscribed, they unsubscribed, they did not subscribe. You know, so if you look here, I have 155 people unsubscribed in June, but I only sent 15 emails. And even the month before that was only four. So it has nothing to do with the volume of emails you're sending. It has to do with if they're still interested in the content and you don't want them on your list if they're not interested in the content because 
that will drag down your open rate. Your open rate will actually be lower the more people that are on your list that don't open because they don't want to read it. <laughs> so we want to make sure that that's fine. They can unsubscribe, have a nice time, see you later kind of thing. Um, so um, over here, we have our open rate. Um, this was 15 emails and we had a 14% open rate, but we sent one in July and it had a 22% open rate. So it really has a lot to do with what you're sending and um, when people are receiving it and how they're receiving it. So let's look at some of the emails that I've sent. If it will load. <laughs> let's see, oh, there it goes. All right, let's actually go back. I don't know if I can go back. Let's see here, put a hundred up here. I'm going to see what my July email was to show you that one that had a uh, 22% open rate average for my industry is about 20%. So getting up to that point is, uh, it's can be a struggle, but it's good. And the thing is like, if you guys have ever seen stuff from me, you probably don't open every single one, but there's some that come through and you're like, Oh, that's really going to be important for me to read. That's going to be important for me to look at. All right. Let me scroll really fast here. September, June, let me look for my July, my one July email. Here we go. This was my one July email, my list cleaning in progress. <laughs> and I did clean it in July. And I had a huge unsubscribe rate in, um, I think it was September, I think. Um, or, or it was in, in August. Um, so there's a huge bunch of people that unsubscribed, but this is because I kind of asked them to. Like, if you don't need this anymore, don't let me junk up your inbox. <laughs> and then I had, this is a 16% open rate here. This is a 17%. Um, this is a repeat. So this is saying, hey, this is the Veterans Workshop again. So even though this one was 16%, this one is a lower percentage. Some people had already seen it. Some people had already subscribed or they, you know, they'd already registered. They'd already kind of dealt with it. And so when people see repeat emails like that, even though they're reminders, sometimes they'll just delete them. They won't even open them, which is good because it wasn't for them. Again, they just, they just got it because they were on the list. So this one here, 12%, a lower rate, but it's the same email again, the same information. There's another 12%. That one was a really big deal. They were offering this for free for veterans. And so I really wanted to make sure everybody knew about it and they could send it to people and forward it. Um, and so that's why this, you can see this open rate just declines. So it's not just that one email that's you're looking at the open rate, but you're looking at the series that you can send to get that, um, to get the open rate kind of average. And then uh, let's see here. This was the 10 hours of marketing. Starting um, starting right here on this one I've, I've got here. This is a 17% open rate. Then we have a 16% open rate. Then we have a 14%. And that was the last one for that. So I sent three emails for that event. And I'm getting, you know, 1% click there, 0.8% uh, clicks there, and 0.9% clicks there. That's huge. I mean, having 24 people and 21 people and 29 people actually click through to, to do the registration, um, whether they registered or not, but I actually ended up having a hundred people register for that, for that one. So it wasn't just me that was promoting it. I obviously their score was promoting it and things like that, but you know, that was big for me to actually have those people click through. So it's not just about how many people you have on your list. It's not just about how many people actually open it. Cause you're looking at this going 300 out of two, you know, 2,600, that seems like low, right? <laughs> but really these are the engaged people. And they're different engaged people at different times. There's even an um, option in here where you can go and look at exactly who opened it, exactly who read it, um, and who clicked on it. So you can actually see who the engaged people are. And I've even had some people that I've known and my different colleagues, they've actually gone through their lists, looked at their last year of engaged people, and just cut their list to that. And I was like, oh, that's a little scary for me because <laughs> people come and go, they're in and out, their you know, lives change. And, 
you know, things happen and they might leave you in January, but come back in October kind of thing. And so, you know, I'm too a little too afraid to do that, but it does give you a higher open rate. Now their lists have like 80% open rates because all the people are their engaged people. Um, and there's not anybody else in there kind of clouding up the numbers. So that's why I'm saying these numbers are good to know, but they're not really one of those that you're like have to live and die by as far as your email marketing. Um, this one right here, and if you look at this, this makes a lot more sense here is what I mentioned. This only had 95 participants. This was the people that were in the um, uh, webinar for the veterans. And I just sent it to the list of people that were registered at the time of the 30 minutes before. And 34 people opened it, but they also got an email from the company who was putting this on, um, UNF. So only three people needed it, right? So I got a huge open rate, 35%. But it was more of a, a courtesy. It was more of a, hey, don't forget kind of thing. Um, but you can see my open rate is huge compared to my other ones because the list is so small that I went to. It was very segmented. Um, so when you're doing something like this, don't worry so much about the percentages, but do worry more about what content is good and what can I actually offer people that's going to make uh, an impact you know, for them. And like I said, anything that has a low number you have a higher open rate. So for me, my average is anywhere between 13 to 17% or 12 to 17% um, as I'm just kind of scrolling through here in the last couple of months. And some are lower, some are higher. And um, like I said, it just depends on what I'm sharing. Now, I am very specific in my subject lines about like, this is a new podcast. So the people who are interested in the podcast, they're gonna click on this. I had 30, 334 people actually click on it and 21 people actually clicked through to the podcast. I'm seeing that correlation numbers in my podcasting software. So we're seeing the numbers go up every day for that, which is pretty awesome. Um, but I'm seeing it saying, okay, yeah, these people are actually clicking through, this makes sense. Um, it's not just like bot numbers or whatever, because sometimes they can get in there too. But um, this one shows me that pretty much consistently, I'm in the 13%. Let me go down here to another podcast one. Here's another one. This one was 15%. This one said affiliate marketing is the best. 15% open rate. Come up here to every ad deserves a landing page. 13.9%. Not bad. Podcasting show notes and scripts. 13.25. Not as many people interested in that one. Um, let's see what else we got. Oh, consistency and efforts, 15.78. That one was a huge one. I've even had people who I've talked to on the phone who I've been messaging say, I saw your email about your podcast. I listened to it. Like I'm seeing that evidence kind of follow through. So you can see that the, the subject line, even if, even though I say new podcast every time, and I really literally have the same photo in there and the little description just pulls in automatically that subject line is super important. So when I title my podcasts, this is the kind of stuff people want to see. This is where I need to go with my podcasting topics and things like that. So it can really give me a good idea for that. Now, these media masterclasses, these are actually media appearances that I've had this year. So I don't make the titles. I don't do anything like that. I use the titles that each podcast that I've been on, you know, that they give me. So they gave me this one, 14%. I mean, almost 15%. That's not bad. Another one, six to 12 months of social media. Another almost 15%. This one, absolute marketing in a week featuring Elizabeth Pampalone. And I wish they spelled my name wrong. <laughs> and it's 12%. So you can definitely tell which subject lines are getting more traction from my audience, even though these are subject lines that I didn't have um, that I didn't put out, I didn't put together, that they put together. So uh, those are just some options there. So you guys have any questions on any of that? I know I've been kind of going on here. Let me go to the chat. Anybody have any questions? Let me see, there we go. All right. So is this kind of giving you a better idea? Is this helping? Are you getting some clarity on the different pieces, different elements? 
Okay. So let's talk about actually building an email out. So I'm actually going to build one right now for my virtual day and my live day. And I'm going to make them pretty much the same. Um, but I'm going to actually just, I'm just going to make two separate ones because they're both for different um, days. So I have my description here. And I'm going to copy that. This is from the, um, the membership. I'm going to go to create a campaign. And actually, I'm going to copy the title first. I'm going to copy this title. And uh, let's see. I'm going to put... this little Christmas tree guy in here. There we go. So this is my little, I'm gonna rearrange this a little bit. This makes more sense. Okay, so when you see the subject line, this is what you're gonna see. The date, Christmas tree, which makes it stand out in your email, um, social media, in a day hands-on workshop virtual and um that that could be a good subject line but i'm actually probably going to rename it um and sometimes i'll put a subject line in and i'll kind of sit there and look at it for a few minutes and go would that make me want to click on that <laughs> would that make me actually stop and go yeah that's what i want to do um so what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to take this and cut it and I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna have it in my copy and paste for a second, um, because what I really want to say is, um, get better at social media in 2021. And I'm gonna do that instead. Now, would you click on that one? That might be a little better, right? Let's say. Get more consistent social media. Let's see, get a more consistent presence. You're just watching this me build this like literally. Whoops, like literally right now. So this is the process I go through sometimes. <laughs> uh, there we go. Maybe like that. I might do that one. I'm gonna try that one, see how that one goes. So get more, get a more consistent social media presence in 2021 with less effort. All right. I'm actually gonna go. I'm gonna say this instead, because this makes sense. All right. So now I'm gonna choose um, the drag and drop editor. And this is what I typically use for all of my, my emails. Um, it kind of fills in some stuff for you. And I usually end up kind of erasing a lot of this. So um, this I end up changing to my logo, which is here. Make it a little bigger. And um, this one, I don't like my headers and everything to be above my picture. I like my picture to be first. So I'm gonna bring those down below. It's just dragging and dropping. And then for my picture, I might leave this blank and create something in Canva. So I will just kind of leave that for a second. Um, and then here, I'm gonna put this. And I'm gonna take out the date, because I'm going to put that somewhere else. So it says social media um, in a day. Social. I'm just going to do social media hands-on workshop. And then I'm going to do another one that says virtual. I'm um, going to do that. And then I'm going to do another one that says December 28th, 2020. 
And then we do 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. All right. How's it look so far? I'm kind of getting there. I like all of my buttons to actually be my color. Um, let's see here. I want to make my color here. Um, oops, let's see here. I think I memorized it, but sometimes I don't remember. There we go. That's my color. All right. So I'm actually going to do two buttons here. So I'm going to scroll down and sometimes you can just drop this down here and it, there's a buttons option. There we go. I'm going to do two buttons. Oh, stop. Okay. Um, oh. Let me just apply this to my other buttons. I'll do it. Oh. All right. Just have to type it in again. Sometimes their thing in there doesn't work. All right, there's one. And here's the other one. I'm gonna make this one actually um, yellow. So this one will be my um, RSVP. And this one will be my learn more. Sometimes I do two buttons, sometimes I don't. Uh, it just depends on what I'm I'm sharing in here. So now I'm going to come back here. I'm going to grab my text and put it in and center that. Um, I'm going to break it up a little bit. See what looks best. and take out some of the stuff that doesn't really mean anything for this section because you can see it once you actually click over to the link. So I always also want to have like a link where I'm going to share them to, right? So over here, my first word. Oh, it does. There we go. It's probably in my other one. Yeah, it is <laughs> to fix it. Um, so I'm going to thank you, uh, Nancy. Um, this is why I need copyright. I mean, I need a proofreaders. <laughs> and usually if I send this out, someone will just email me and be like, hey, your reverse word must spell. And I'm like, okay. And then I go fix it for the next email. <laughs> um, so, so I've got that in here and I've got the date and everything. I might want to change this date and time color maybe to, um, you know, my green, maybe even just red because um, like kind of like a Christmassy thing. I've got my green and yellow down here. Now, where I'm going to send them is uh, this, this thing here, right? So if I'm gonna send them here, it does not mean that I can directly send them. So I have to send them to my membership. And if you're already a part of the membership, you'll just get right to this page. But if you're not a part of the membership, it will ask you to join for free. So I'm gonna just put this in both. And I know you guys probably think this is a little weird, but I actually put the same link in both buttons because some people just need a little extra and some people are just like, let me do it. And so I like to look at the, um, the you know, split on how many people click each one. Um, that's just kind of for me, like I like the way that that's how it's interesting to me. Um, it also helps me to see like how many people that I am working with or that I'm sending this to are like, let's do it, you know, and how many people are like, okay, wait, I got to check this out. So this is pretty much going to be it. Um, let me come down here um, and let me see here. Unsubscribe. All right. I don't think the comma goes there. Okay. Let me just save that. All right. So. I think this is pretty much done. And what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna just pop up Canva here just to show you how quick and easy one of these can be, one of these little images. I'm gonna put this in the window here. 
There we go. I'm just going to open up an Instagram post because these are usually a good size. And Christmas. Come here, everyone. Come here. Come here. All right. So I'm going to probably choose something like this. I kind of like this idea. Um, let's see. Maybe this one. That way I can change the colors to my colors. So I can change them like this and maybe oh not that one there we go and let's change this one to that oh it's really bright so we'll just do something like that and then in here we will do a picture of me which I have in here somewhere. Uh, let's see. There's a lot of stuff in here from like all the different things I've been involved with is crazy actually. No, nope, that's not gonna work either. I need a transparent one. All right, I don't think I have a transparent one. So put this in here. Oh, oops, it's looking elements. There we go. Santa hat. And I will find a transparent picture of me. Workshop or yeah, workshop. And just make it all my colors and then so this is how quick that it can be to do something like this. And I want to find the picture of me that's transparent. Um, and I'm gonna put it under the with the Santa hat on. And that's gonna be my my image. What do you guys think? Pretty quick. I mean, I did it quick because I just picked a template, right? I'm a graphic designer and I still picked a template because it just makes it easier to start with something that's already written, that's already designed, um, than having to sit there and try and like, well, what's going to look good or what's going to be, you know, the best or whatever. It's like, it doesn't have to be that complicated. Let me um, bring up this and I think... I have, yeah, I have my photos right here and my transparent one is here. There we go. Did it go in? Oh, there it is. And I'm sticking to my colors for the most part. I'm not doing, I mean, I've got the red hat, right? But I'm not doing anything where I'm using red fonts here. I've already got red font for the date to make it stand out in my email. Um, so I'm trying to keep it a little bit more to my colors and actually this guy, um, uh, that hat isn't going to work because it's got like a cream thing to it. Let's see if this one will work. Uh, there we go. That works pretty good. All right. And we'll just make this a little bit bigger. All right. There I am, the elf. Social media in a day workshop. And um, I'm going to put on here the virtual. And on my other design I did for this, which was for the other, um, for the page itself. Um, I did this design where it says virtual like this. So I could just use this if I wanted, but I wanted to make it a little bit more festive. Um, and so I'm going to copy this and move it up here. So now that it says virtual, uh, let's make this black. There we go. 
and I can actually bring this down a little bit. So now it kind of has similar elements from the other one, um, but it's not exactly the same. It's a little bit more fun, a little more interesting looking because um, the other one's a little bit more like I want to keep it more to the brand because of where it is in the, you know, the in the membership and all that stuff. Um, so there we go. Looks pretty good. All right. Let's make this a little smaller. Actually, let's just get rid of that one. All right, make it a little more simple. There we go. And then I'll put the date on it. And that'll be the image. So we will duplicate this. December 28th, 2020. There we go. Perfect, so now I'm gonna download this, just the first page, and then put it into our email and I'll schedule it and I'll show you the times where I'm gonna save it or send it to. So now I just click here, we'll just add our image. And there it is. Awesome. Don't you want to go to it? Doesn't it look fun? <laughs> so now that we've got that, um, and since we have the title here, you might think you want to take the title out here. No, we need to keep it because sometimes pictures don't show up for people and then they don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so I'd like to kind of repeat myself in some ways because if I put text on the image, I can't just let it be that. I need to make sure that it's down here as well. Um, and then it just has that information there. Learn more, RSVP, takes them to the same link. I like to also link my picture. So let me go over here, copy my link again. Put that with my photo. These, these don't need links. Um, they, they offer links if you want to, but I don't usually do that. And there's my text. And there's my links. Okay, so my buttons. And I think that's pretty much going to be it. I don't think there's anything else I need to add in here. So let me see if there's any. Okay, I don't want to do that. All right, so then I'll be done. And let me see what this looks like with a dark background. Too dark. Let's try. No, oh, it's gonna be too light. That actually looks a little better. Just to make it stand out more, give it a little pop to it. Um, everything kind of brings it off the page rather than it being like white on white and everything just being really, really stark. And then for here, sometimes I'll even go in and like, see they've got the padding here. I'll just like bring this up because there's too much extra white space sometimes, so. All right, so that one's done. So then I'll just click on preview, um, I send a test email, I'll send it to myself. And I like to do this because sometimes if things don't look exactly the same, um, you can kind of fix it or adjust it if you need to. Um, and I'll also do this with clients when I'm working with clients to send them, send them a test email so they can see it. Because sometimes when it shows up in different browsers, it looks funny, um, but as long as you're at least testing it, and showing it, um, let's see what we got here. Yeah, so it looks pretty good. And this is what the subject line is, get a more consistent social media presence in 2021 in a day. And then there's the virtual image and it's December 28th and there's all the information, learn more. It goes to a link you can see in the bottom of your um, bottom right or left-hand corner, it says absolutemarketing.mn.co events. That's kind of like a little thing to tell me that 
yes, this will link to that page if I click it. I don't need to click it because when I hover and it shows me that, that means it's going to go there. And then if I hover over RSVP, I get the same. It kind of goes away. You can see it blinking the bottom there. And if I hover over this link here, that's going to take me to get absolutemarketing.com. So I can kind of see where these links will go without actually going to them and just making sure they're going to the right place. Yes, they're all going to the right place. All right, so that's done. Close this, close this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and done editing and I'm just gonna schedule this and I'm gonna duplicate it for a couple of times so that people can um, go to it. And I'm gonna send it to all active members, review and confirm, and gonna schedule it for later. And I'll probably send one tomorrow at 5 a.m. And I don't click anything else. I'm just scheduling the time and the date and then schedule. And then I've got it in here in my list. I'm gonna make a copy of it. It's gonna take me into the drafts. Now it's in my drafts. So I'm gonna hit schedule and I'm gonna send it on. So I sent one here. So I'm gonna skip Thanksgiving week. I'm gonna send it on the first at 5 a.m. And then I'm gonna send it one more time Copy it one more time. It's going to take me to drafts, schedule it on. And actually, before I schedule the last one, I'm going to hit the subject line up here and I'm going to say, and then tickets almost sold out. I'm just going to put that and then I'm going to put that schedule. And I'm going to put this one in December, not Christmas week, maybe on the 17th. So I'm only sending it um, three times. I'm sending it at 5 a.m. each time. And now it is in my schedule already done. I changed the subject line on one of them towards the end but I really want this to get across because if someone sees this one time and they don't open it, that's, that's fine. But then they're going to think about it and then it's going to kind of get in their brain a little bit. And then they see it a second time with the same subject line and they're going to be, Oh, that thing I meant to right? I meant to look at that. I meant to do that. Then they're going to open it the second time, or maybe even the third time. And they're like, Oh my gosh, this thing's almost sold out. I meant to do that last week. And then, you know what I mean? So you kind of want to, remind people without having to change everything. Everybody's like, oh, you should change the subject line all the time or, oh, you should change the wording. And it, no, because a lot of the people probably aren't going to read it anyway. <laughs> and the rest of the people, they've already read it and they're just going to ignore it because they've already signed up or they're already in, right? They've already done it. So that's how I do those. Um, I try not to send two on, a, on the same day, but sometimes my podcast will go out as the same time as a, an email that I've scheduled like this, because I literally, you saw me picking the days. I was kind of being random about it, but I was kind of being, making sure there was enough space in between each one. Um, and so sometimes those will go out on the same days as, you know, a, a podcast or a happy client or a media masterclass. And that's okay. Um, but if it's like, I'm specifically on purpose scheduling everything on the same, everything goes out on Tuesday. That might be like five emails in one day and that's not good. <laughs> so be more random, pick different days, pick different, um, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Monday, Friday, Saturday. It doesn't really matter what day, as long as you know that your people are going to be um, involved and engaged with that. All right. So um, I'm going to show you one last thing before we kind of wrap up. So I don't want to keep you guys too long. The last piece is... When you create a campaign, there's this little arrow here that you can drop down and there's an RSS option. And that allows you to create these that kind of come from your website or come from the podcast or whatnot. So if I click RSS campaign, I have to fill in an RSS feed. So for example, this is an RSS feed. You can actually steal this. I tell people they can steal it because if you copy this, you can right click copy link address that'll take the feed for you. Um, if you copy this and you paste it into your mailer light, you could actually send out my podcast to your list if you thought that would be helpful for them. So if you don't have your own podcast or you want to try it out, you could do this. So you put the feed in there and then you say, look up 
and I don't think this one's going to work. I need to change it because <laughs> I think I changed it and I did. Okay. Uh, it's probably not, it's going to take forever. Um, but basically you have to have a feed in order to, to look it up. So let me pull another one. Let me actually go to one of the ones I already have because I just changed my podcast feed. So my bad. All right, let's go in here. I should show it to me at the top here. So this is the, um, this is a podcast one, I think. Yeah. All right, if I go to RSS settings, this is basically where we were a minute ago. Um, come on, you can do it. Here we go, edit. Okay, so here it is right here. This is the one I changed it to. So it's podcast, you know, Bubbean, whatever feed. This is their feed from there. And if I click look up, it should pull it. There we go. And it has a little green check mark and it says, yeah, that's good. Then you can put, I just put new podcast colon. And then there's a little last post title, which means whatever the most recent one it's sending is, it'll put it right in there. So that's what puts the title in for me. I don't have to do it. Then I just say who it's from. There's my email address. But this little feed thing is really the only piece that's kind of different from writing a regular email. And once you do that <clears throat> and you go into the editing of the actual, you know, what the email looks like, um, when you're editing the content, there's a block. It's called an RSS block. And that you can do for, like I said, for blogs, podcasts, news feeds. Like if you're really into a certain news feed, um, you know, they have like a, their own blog and you want to send those out to your people um, automatically, you can do that. So if you click on this, it's an RSS feed right here. This is the URL. It's pulling it from where we just entered it a moment ago. It's telling me it's only going to show one item at a time, which is what I want. I don't want it sending like 10 at a time. It's going to pull a little bit of a um, description. It's going to pull the title, the listen now option. So it takes them to the page and then it's going to, I'm going to save it. And that's going to be, it. it's going to send this image, this stuff that it's pulling from this feed over here. And it's going to have the option for them to listen now. And that's it. So it's very, very simple to send this. You don't have to, um, you know, have a ton of stuff in here that's going to junk it up. And this is what makes people read it. This is what makes people go, I have time for that. I have time to look at this. I have time to read through this. It, you can read that in two seconds. It's not, you know, it's a lot really time consuming. So that's what I mentioned before about, um, you know, really making sure that your email marketing is actually not overwhelming people. It's not newslettery. It's not 10 things at once, that it's very simple, one thing at a time, and that it is important, impactful, and makes an impression. Do you guys have any questions? All right, I'm going to stop sharing that. I don't see any in the chat. So um, I really wanna thank you guys for coming on here today and um, listening to all these email marketing tips. And I hope that they're gonna really help you. Um, this can all be done ahead of time. You can do 12 months, you can do um, six months, you can do three months. But setting up a little outline of what you want to say, the types of things you would want to share, pulling things from social media, expanding on them, making a blog post out of something, and then using that, all good stuff. So to do it, yes, now to do it, exactly. <laughs> we have to just sit down and do it. Um, and I recommend that, you know, I'm going to have this recording um, in the membership. I recommend if you want to go back and watch through pieces of it um, pause it and, and do it as you go. I did the whole tutorial, you know, you can watch it and do it as you go. Um, that would be good too. And I do, I am going to be setting up, um, work days. So co-working days will be in the membership. they will be once a month. We'll have a feedback day once a month. So you can actually bring me, share with me on zoom things that you're doing. And I'm going to give you feedback on them, um, and really like critique them, whatever you need for that. And then um, also we're going to be doing a networking day once a month. So all that's going to be starting in January. I don't want to overwhelm everybody during the holidays or myself. <laughs> so we'll kind of just let that be for now. But um, we're having the two sessions at the end of the month for social media. 
Those are the paid sessions um, for the full days or the, the half days really. Um, and then in January, we're gonna start those things that are part of the membership. Uh, the membership will be paid in January. So make sure that you know, you're in, so you're good. Uh, anybody else you know that needs to be in this that really should be a part of it, get them in now so they'll be grandfathered in. Uh, you guys are all grandfathered in, it's free. So you won't ever have to pay. Um, but in January, we're starting to uh, starting it as a paid paid membership. So um, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. And uh, if you have any questions, put them in the membership in the chat information, you know, um, post something, ask questions. That's what we're all here for is to share. And um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. <laughs>